Hello, lovely friend. I am Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. We are doctors and weight management and metabolic health experts. And this is The The Real Real Health Health and Weight Weight Loss Podcast. Good morning, Dr. Mary. How are you today, gorgeous one? I'm really good, lovely Dr. Lucy. We have got uh, a celebration to celebrate, which is making me feel proud, reflective. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a pride kind of swelling in my chest at the moment. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? Yeah, I well. How am I feeling? I've look like all humans. There's a mixture of of emotions that I've got going on at the moment. Um, I have a few things going on with my my dad, who's you know getting older and has just gone into an aged care facility. So there's a lot of um, just stuff that goes on with that. A lot of difficult emotions that you know probably old me would have just shoveled down with a packet of Tim Tams. New me is having to feel them. So that's just you know, percolating along in the background. But, you know, right at this particular moment, I mean, today we're recording this and it's Halloween. And, you know, again, for me, growing up, Halloween was was really not much of an event in my childhood, but I understand it's quite different these days. And you, Mares, have little kids, so you'll be in mm. the thick of it. I believe I may live with Australia's greatest Halloween enthusiast. I'm not sure, but I'm going to put it out there that my daughter loves Halloween more than anybody else in the Southern Hemisphere. Right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my empirical opinion. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> Halloween has become a bit of a big deal. i kind of grateful that, you know, I live quite rurally and so trick-or-treaters aren't going to come here so I don't have to do the whole house decorating thing. But my goodness me, the Halloween costumes are, I think, possibly more important than anything else. My bright little girl's got a lot going on in her life right now. She's got, you know, performances and exams and all of these great things happening in her incredibly busy, very creative little 10-year-old life. But the Halloween costume has been front and centre for weeks. So today is it's show day and I have to drive her into the nearest city with her friends so that she can go trick-or-treating and get lots of processed junky lolly crap. Indeed, indeed. So I too am filled with mixed emotions. <laughs> <laughs> and And this is the interesting world in which we live is – You know, you've got your ideals, like what you would love to happen. And, you know, in a perfect world, we love our kids not to be influenced by processed food companies and their mischievous marketing tactics. But in the real world, you know, we know that these things are going to happen and we can't shield, nor is it practical to shield or potentially even helpful to shield them from everything. That's absolutely right. Yeah, about being real. It is real. And there is no right or wrong way for the beautiful parents of the world to navigate this day. Uh, You know, you get to do it however you choose to do it. For me, when she was younger and she would get lollies from parties, Halloween, whatever, I would give her a few and then hide the bag. And then after a while, she'd forget about it. And once she forgot about it, I'd throw them out. That definitely does not fly now. So now it's about having conversations with her, helping her understand how these foods are really addictive. And she gets it. She really does because she finds them so delicious, so hard to regulate. She can see it in herself that, you know, if there's some jelly snakes sitting in a, you know, a paper bag in the cupboard, she really wants them. And I do let her have them. But With this, you know, talking about it, educating her, and also wherever possible, my child nutrition mantra is crowd out the junk, crowd out the junk. I can't control the whole world, but I can make sure that she has, you know, protein with all of her meals and some, and she's, she's nicely satiated before she goes out trick or treating. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of our mantras in particular, one of our philosophies is that 
a lot of people want to hang the blame on the individual. You know, oh, they're not healthy, it's their fault, or they're overweight, it's their fault, when in fact we know that there are much more complex forces at play. You know, individual things obviously include stuff like their genetics, their hormones, all those sorts of hoo-ha. That's one thing, but the more pressing thing, I guess, is the the fact that none of the processed food industry are regulated at all. And I know people are rail against regulation, but when you've got people making such a lot of money out of people's and playing really with people's health, then sometimes a little bit of regulation could be helpful. It is. So we humans have this natural desire for for ceremony and for marking occasions and the Irish part of me, so my, my family is from Ireland, we love a Halloween. Sarwin is this pagan festival, you know, it marks the coming of the darker half of the year. You know, it's this beautiful nature-inspired festival of which, you know, Halloween is part. And it's it's big in Ireland. It's, it's a really, really important day for a lot of people. And then processed food industry has come along and slathered the whole thing in lollies or candy if you live in other parts of the world. And that, definitely, I hate that, but the actual you know, wanting to dress up, wanting to mark the occasion. That's beautiful. That's human. That's fun. Yes. It comes down to the balance, doesn't it? That's our thing. You know, you know, it's easy to be a zealot. It's easy to be one dimensional, finding the balance in life. That's the hard bit. And, you know, that's the bit that we're constantly navigating. But going back to your uh, message, Mares, where you talked about marking ceremony, we have an announcement with marking our own ceremony. We do. This is the celebration that we are celebrating that I'm very excited about. Is This little podcast of ours has now got 500,000 downloads. Indeed. Indeed. So it's almost like a double whammy because not only that, it's our third year anniversary and we haven't missed a week. In fact, some one weeks we've done two. Every single week we've produced an episode, hopefully that's been interesting and valuable. And, you know, we have half a million people who have listened to it. So it's like, huh, oh, huh. Oh. Yeah, we're not yeah. just sort of there talking to the ether of nobody. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We've taken our love of of being real, of promoting, you know, real food and real advice and real changes so that people really can improve their life. And we've been doing it for three years, half a million downloads. It's a time of celebration and reflection. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, I mean, as you said, humans do like to mark occasions and quite often that occasion can be a time to reflect on what you've been doing, you know, looking at what's going well and perhaps, you know, doubling down on that, looking at what's not going so well and working out can we improve that, do we need to get rid of that. They're all techniques that we use particularly in our our coaching styles but they're applicable to so much of life. Yes. One of the the greatest personal benefits of this whole beautiful real-life medicine journey that I've been on is as I have learnt more and more to help people with their mindset, to help people with their health, I mean, I've just naturally gotten better and better at helping myself with my mindset and helping myself with my health. So it's been it's been a beautiful synergy which has made my life just so wonderful. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. And, you know, any doctors who listen to our podcast, and I know there are quite a few, will remember the mantra that I remember learning right back when I was a junior doctor, which was the see one, do one, teach one. So you would see something being done, you'd do it yourself, and then you'd teach it. And that's sort of what we've done. We saw what was happening to our own health. We fixed it. So we did it and now we teach it. <laughs> That's right. And to celebrate this, we've, you know, you may have noticed, lovely listener, we've we've given our podcast a little bit of a glow up. We've we've changed our introduction. I hope you like it. Feedback welcome. Um <laughs> T 
to, you know, to give a bit of a zhuzh, you know, that's like yeah. our equivalent of chucking on some lippy and, um, and making it all look <laughs> nice. <laughs> and we've updated the artwork that you'll see when you log on to your, you know, if you listen through Apple or whatever platform, Spotify, you'll see there's a new new cover. You know, I guess, you know, we look at it as a, a reset in some ways. It's certainly a reinvention and all of that is possible with any part of your life. Like that's what I I just love that life and and I know that you really do embrace this concept, but the idea of, you know, the choose your own adventure, like those books that were popular when I was a kid where there were multiple outcomes and the outcome depended on which page you chose. Well, you get to choose your own adventure in, in this great big thing called life. Yes, and you can change. You get to choose. You get to choose where you're going. If you're heading down a path with your health, with your work, with your relationships that you are not liking, you can change. And change may sound big and scary, but it doesn't need to be, particularly with your health. I feel so passionate about this that small changes actually add up to huge changes over time and something that could seem quite impossible like you know living without coke uh living i'm talking about the canned coke the cola yeah the cola (laughs) uh actually when you actually just start and give it a go and support yourself with the right mindset changes and the right advice it can actually be really easy And something like that is a real world example of how you can completely change the trajectory of your health, your weight and your whole life. It really doesn't have to be that hard. It really is doable. And all of us are able to make the healthy little changes that we want and need to live the future life that we want, to be the future selves that we want. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, if I bring it back to our podcast, we're up to nearly whatever it is, 180 episodes. If somebody had said to me, listen, you need to go and do 180 episodes like, and, and you've got to record them <laughs> and you've got to then write all the notes and you've got to you know, publish it on a website and you have to do it 180 times, I would have been thinking, oh, holy hell, that sounds hard and big and undoable. So yeah, no thanks. But instead, we just focused on one episode at a time. Sometimes we record a couple in a row. It's not perfect by any stretch. You know, we know that. That's okay. (laughs) Yeah. Happy for people to tell us. (laughs) (laughs) We know. But, (laughs) But it is absolutely consistent, absolutely consistent. It's imperfectly consistent. And that's that is just the key, isn't it, Mares? It is, it is. It's what you do most of the time that matters and you don't need to be perfect. You can stumble over your words. You can have podcasts where you're less than completely articulate and started by saying, I want to celebrate a celebration, for example, (laughs) which is how I started this podcast episode, beautiful people. I know, perfect, absolutely perfect. (laughs) Yes, yep. One of the things that we that we talked about was this idea of of reflection and, you know, a glow up of the podcast, for example. And, you know, you can do that with your health. You can have a glow up of your health. You can have a reset. You can pivot at any time. You can make changes that are helpful. And I know you said it earlier in the podcast, Mess, but the, the sum of those changes is it's like compound interest. We always have a little joke in our house about compound interest because once upon a time my mother-in-law told the, a story to my kids about compound interest and they said it was way above their heads. So whenever we, whenever I hear the phrase compound interest, we always there's always this sort of knowing wink and a nod in my place, which is just a little side note. <laughs> Families often have that, don't they? They have little phrases or little things that are just pertinent to that particular family. No one else knows what you're talking about. But you, you can have the effects of compound interest on your health. Yes. And things can compound quite quickly. And we need to be not afraid to make small changes. 
you know, if you've got a big health goal, like I, I want to lose 30 kilos or I want to reverse my diabetes or, you know, I've, I've got this heart disease, so, you know, it's just, it's too big. I need to make too many changes. You might have this big lofty goal and think that something as small as reducing, you know, your sugary beverage intake, well, that's just too small. Why would I even bother with that? But, that reaching for the goal that that you can grasp, reaching for what you can actually grab hold of is a very powerful first step. And if you just take those steps, they do add up to big changes quickly. So don't be afraid of small changes. Absolutely. And we call that the low hanging fruit. You can make changes with the low hanging fruit, get the foundation set in and have monumental effects on your health, which are wonderful. And then, you know, for some people, they want to go that next step and it's a little bit more nuanced. And again, that's also important and helpful. But sometimes people get worried about the minutia when they haven't actually done the low hanging fruit yet. They're right up the top, getting all worried about the tiny bits up the top and how am I going to manage this? And what am I going to do about this? But what about somebody else said this? And it's like, how about we just focus, take a step back, and get the low-hanging fruit. So, Mayors, I guess for us, if I asked you what you know, what is this low-hanging fruit? What would you what would you describe it as? Oh, it's easier than you might think. Start with the processed foods. Start with the highly refined carbohydrates. That's definitely where I would start. And if you you start there. And you start to get some wins, you'll start to feel better, your metabolism will change, you will quite literally change your biochemistry, you'll increase your metabolism, you could turn your body into a healthy fat burner for better energy, and then that better energy improves your motivation, improves your mental clarity. All of these things can start snowballing in a really, really positive way when you start small. So that's where I'd start. And, you know, you may think that it's impossible, but it's not. Uh, We've got our seven-day sugar-free reset coming up. It's on again. Yay. And this is a really popular program. Absolutely. And you're in a beautiful, supportive group where you do it all together. You have that added motivation. And people are often shocked and surprised at how easy it is. And it can be incredibly motivating to keep going. So start off with seven days. Of course, you're not going to change your life in seven days, except you actually probably can if you start with seven days and then you learn that you can keep going and it's easier than you think. Absolutely. Because when you start with seven days, you get a little win, you will absolutely feel better. You will feel better by the end of that seven days. Your brain will be, you know, it'll be settled. Initially, it'll be resistant. That's normal. We know that. But that's why we're there in your pocket with you for the seven-day challenge. It's so, so easy. People go, I thought this was going to be hard. I really did. I really thought it was going to be hard. And then they're going, oh, my God, it was easier than I thought. And, again, it's because you're not trying to create 180 podcasts in an afternoon. (laughs) You just start with a small thing. You just start. And then my favorite word, word of the moment, is you build momentum. You do. You could give your health a glow up by joining us November 25 for our seven-day sugar-free reset. It costs just seven bucks. And if this health glow up, yeah, we're with you. Absolutely. Dr. Lucy and me, we are with you. We have a beautiful, fun group challenge and we're there helping you each step of the way. And it does help you build momentum. Ah, oh, I know, which just reminds me, actually, that's just side note, because you know I love to pop in with a side note. My <laughs> other little bit of news, which I forgot about, is that I'm heading off to our momentum retreat in two days. By the time this podcast airs, we will have had it. But it's our first, so the inaugural again, more ceremony, the inaugural Momentum Retreat. So uh, we'll be talking to you lovelies about Momentum, which is our membership, which is a women's only membership. Blokes, we do have a program for you, but it's not Momentum. So it's a separate little thing just to let you know that we haven't forgotten about you. But for our gorgeous women, we have this ongoing membership, this club uh, where we all belong. It's uh, so beautiful. Anyway, they asked 
for us. Could you organise a retreat? It was right at the time that we were organising the Low Carb Roadshow and I'm thinking, oh, sure, one more thing. What else? What? Eight events and a retreat, no problem. Anyway, the good news is uh, it sold out in about a second and now we're off tomorrow, not, not tomorrow, the next day to the Hunter Valley with 20 beautiful members for a glorious reset. Yes, I'm, I'm not going because I have to stay home and, and look after my kids. But Lucy, it's going to be a beautiful retreat and I have serious FOMO, like it's a palpable amount of FOMO, like a kind of like a, a knot in my gut FOMO, uh, but I know that yes. we'll have a great time. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, and being our inaugural one, it's good because what basically what I'll do, like I do with everything, is we will uh, just experience it for all its wonderfulness but also reflect and reset and see what works well what doesn't work well because we'll be running again next year that's right (sighs) reflect reset (sighs) beautiful ceremony I really do I love being human um, yeah, I'm pretty I, grateful that I get to spend this life as a human being. Ah, uh, do you know what though? I just think I'm so grateful that I get to do this job. Like this job is the best job in the world. And you know, since we're celebrating, I I think that we should, you know, we we have created this life for ourselves, you and me, Mez, from scratch. Not quite as fundamental as say making breast milk from scratch, but still. <laughs> A process <laughs> from scratch through the process of refining, reflecting, correcting, innovating. We have kind of, you know, whittled it away. You know, I was listening to some other podcast recently about how the statue of David was created and basically they said, oh, you know, they, they just took away all the marble that wasn't David. And I kind of think sometimes that's a bit like this this real life medicine gig, we have been able to create, you know, a job from nothing, but in a way that serves people really well, which is one of our fundamental principles and create, you know, employment for other people. And I don't know, I'm just going to bang my own drum and blow my own trumpet for a second. I love it. It's a lovely example of icky guy that we have been able to take our passion for empowering people to be well and create this real life medicine that, you know, we can do it in a way that fits in with our lives, that serves our purpose, that helps people, that we've created this beautiful community and we do our seven day sugar free resets and we do our 12 week mind body rebalance and we have our beautiful momentum club and our group coaching for men. And we have all of these wonderful things that we get to do that, yes, helps people. You know, and I get to work from home most of the time and spend time with my kids. Yeah, I know. It's perfect. Win-win fills our cup by doing good. And I think, you know, huzzah. <laughs> That's right. And, boy, have we done it imperfectly, which is just the only way you do anything, <laughs> imperfectly and consistently (laughs) exactly all right my lovely friends we hope you've enjoyed this episode of the real health and weight loss podcast that sounds a lot like an outro but you know (laughs) we would love 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 to see you in the sugar-free reset and uh, all the notes as usual in the show notes including all the links so we'll see you round like a result bye-bye gorgeous listeners The information shared on the Real Health and Weight Loss podcast, including show notes and links, provides general information only. It is not a substitute, nor is it intended to provide individualized medical advice, diagnosis or treatment, nor can it be construed as such. Please consult your doctor for any medical concerns.